I was blind, but now I see. It was a really wonderful surprise for me uh, to see the baseball team from East Catholic show up. As many of you know, I taught at East Catholic, I'm an alum myself, and I taught at East Catholic for 40 years and uh, retired three years ago. So the only students back there who remember me are the seniors. Uh, and I did say hello to them. But it does kind of work, work into my homily, you see, because um, the course that I love to teach, the course that I taught every year that I was there, was the freshman Bible survey course. And what I used to do was have my students uh, memorize some verses, memory verses, uh, to help them uh, construct a, a framework in their minds for this, this history of salvation. And one of them comes from the first reading today, uh, the, from the story of the anointing of David as king of Israel. If you remember, it says, not as man sees does God see, because man looks at the appearance, but God sees into the heart. Our first reading has that, uh, that verse, and what did God see when he looked into the heart of David? Well, the scriptures tell us that God saw a man after his own heart, which doesn't mean that David was a perfect man. We know if you keep reading in, in the Old Testament, you'll see that's not the case. But he always desired to do God's will in spite of his personal failings. When David accepted God's call and the anointing to lead God's people, what happened to him? Well, another favorite verse of mine, it wasn't a memory verse, but, but uh, it was one that I always emphasized. And that was at that moment when David was anointed. And back in those days, when you anointed someone uh, as a king, a prophet, or a priest, you filled a whole horn with oil and you poured it on their head. And it covered their head and their shoulders. Wasn't this little, little anointing on the forehead that uh, Emerald's going to receive very soon? Uh, but instead, actually, the pouring of the oil. And the scripture says, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. And that's what happens at baptism and again at our confirmation. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon us and comes to dwell within us. And so uh, we share in that great anointing that David received. And what was the result of this anointing in David's life? Well, we hear it in the responsorial psalm today. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. If I have God, I have all I need. I fear no evil, for you are with me. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. In our gospel, the man born blind is cured of his physical blindness. But much more is taking place in his life today. Jesus told him that he was and that all who uh, live in, in a relationship with him are the light of the world. If he trusted in Jesus, the Son of Man, he would be healed. But healed of what? Physical blindness alone? No, something much greater than that. The man washes in the pool of Siloam, which means scent, and then he comes back and he can see. It doesn't matter to him that the healing happened on the Sabbath. It doesn't matter to him that they believe that his blindness was caused by either his sin or the sin of his parents. Instead, he just knew that he had trusted in this man, Jesus, and that his life was changed. His, the physical blindness and healing represent a much greater blindness a blindness that the professional religious leaders of his day had towards Jesus. The man born blind who can now see is then cast out of the temple because he has been cured, but his healing doesn't conform to the law of the Sabbath and the control that the religious leaders had over religious practice at the temple. And uh, so it is not the blind man, though, who is the one who is truly blind, who is the sinner. No, it was those who chose to remain in the darkness and not see the new life that Jesus had come to bring to the world. 
And in the letter to the Ephesians, we hear that if we accept the, the call of God in baptism and are anointed with God's Spirit, we become children of light. That light produces goodness, righteousness, and truth. Knowing this, we should never take part in the works of darkness that lead us to sin, we're told. If anything, we are called to expose the works of darkness in our lives and in our world and repent of our participation in them. What that means is that those who have been offered the gift of faith in Jesus have been empowered by the Spirit of God and know that Jesus has died for them must then choose to live in the light of his love and his truth. Freely choosing to live in the darkness of sin, to live our lives as we choose rather than as God wants, is really a recipe for disaster. But freely choosing to live as children of God, as children of the light, to reject the darkness of sin, and to walk with Jesus every day of our lives is the recipe for a life that knows no end. Today God says to all of us, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you life. <laughs>